Joining us tonight, tonight for uh, uh, the next installment in the, the uh, legal clinic series that I've been doing here in uh, Tisbury. My name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell, which is uh, fairly large. It's about a 60 person law firm in uh, Worcester. We have offices in Worcester and Westboro. Before that, I worked on my own for about 33 years. I'm like really old. Um, and and uh, I actually joined Myrick because they wanted somebody uh, there that specifically did elder law, and this is most of the work that I have done. And we're talking about a very kind of a specific topic today. Everybody here, who you probably you are here because you, you know it, you lose a little bit of sleep worrying about nursing home issues, and everybody here knows some kind of standing standard stuff about nursing homes. That if you're in a nursing home for a long period, your Medicare doesn't pay for it. Medicare only pays for your nursing home stay if you're getting better. They call, they, they call it acute care. Medicare, like most health insurance, is health insurance. And it co covers the cost of getting better when you're sick. It doesn't cover the cost of just staying kind of the way you are. So if you're stuck in a nursing home uh, um, just the way you are, but you need that level of care, Medicare and your other health insurance isn't going to pay. The typical, and so which means you're on private pay, uh, when you're on private pay here in Martha's Vineyard, you're paying about $12,000 a month. That's what the cost is here. Uh, by the way, Brenda Costa uh, is, has been my paralegal for about 15 years. Uh, a long time ago, she grew up here. Her parents live off the Edgartown Road. Her dad worked on the boat, uh, which is the reason why we started coming back down. It's because Brenda wanted to see her family, and I wanted a tax-deductible reason to come to Martha's Vineyard, which is why I come down. So. Um, it, 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 so health insurance won't pay nursing home. So either you're on private pay or you're qualifying for mass health. And we're going to talk about, and, and you've all heard, well, you know, in order to do that, if, unless you want to spend down all of your assets, you have to give your stuff away and you have to wait five years. There's stuff about irrevocable trusts. There are a bunch of things. And this program is for people who didn't do any of that. And they just find themselves kind of stuck in a nursing home. And we want to talk about that situation, which isn't the best situation, but this is all about making the best of a bad situation. Next slide. So, basic Mass Health 101. Uh, if you are an individual uh, and you want to qualify for Mass Health and you are in a nursing home, uh, it, there is a test. There is a there is a means test. Medi Medicaid. This is Mass Health is the Massachusetts name for Medicaid. Medicaid, unlike Medicare, which was were both created at the same time during the Johnson administration, Medicare was health insurance for the old. You just got it by virtue of just being old. Um, Medicaid was health insurance for the poor. So you need to be demonstrating that you have uh, limited assets and income in order to qualify. Um, you need to show that you have less than $2,000 in countable assets if you are an individual. Uh, and you have to show that you have income that is less than the nursing home rate for the for the for the for the that bed. Now that's not usually really hard because the nursing home charges a ton of money, but the asset one kind of is hard. By the way, it, next slide. So, if you are Mary, uh, and I use Mary, and I use I use Frank and Mary, my kind of make believe couple, a lot because they kind of remind people of a lot of times of themselves. Um, and you have a house that's worth three hundred thousand. She had a house that's worth three hundred thousand dollars, and an IRA worth one hundred fifty, and an annuity worth a hundred, and a bank account worth seventy-five thousand dollars. Or she had about six hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, and if she had Social Security of payments coming in, that was her only income of about a thousand dollars a month. Uh, all that, all of that, would need to get, um, or you you assume would need to get spent down. Uh, before she could qualify for MassHealth. 
uh, and that would last, and, or, and during that middle time, she's going to be on private pay. And all those assets put together at the Martha's Vineyard nursing home rate is going to last her about four years, uh, which means that, that there is no way at this point, if she needed to go to a nursing home, that she could transfer any of these assets out of her name and wait five years. Time had already run out on Mary. Now, one other thing, by the way, that you should know about Mary, and we've talked about this in previous presentations, we were talking about planning. If, if Mary, if, if this were Frank and Mary, if there were a couple and one of them were going to the nursing home, then all of these assets could be protected because they could all be shifted to the other spouse. Uh, the house in that case would be an exempt asset and the remaining assets to the extent that the spouse at home had more than a specific amount, $109,560, a random number. To the extent that that spouse had more than that, that spouse at home could buy an annuity, thereby increasing that spouse's income, keep all the money and the, and, and while, the, while, the, while the other spouse was in the nursing home. So there's never a problem here having to spend down, no matter what you've heard, with having to spend down assets if there's two of you and you're both still alive and one of you goes to the nursing home. The problem comes if both go to the nursing home. And I've had that a couple of times, but that's with people who are typically really old. I mean, they're typically people in their 90s. Uh, or if one spouse has died and the other one has to go, and that's the situation. I, if, if you can, if you could write down questions, I'd appreciate it. I'm going to try to hold questions until the end. Um, so in Mary's situation, assuming that Frank has died, she's got a problem. But it is not as bad as you probably think it is. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Next slide. And the reason why Mary kind of knows about this um, is because Mary, by the way, who was 82 years old, had two twin brothers, Peter and Paul, who had, who had, all, who had died before. They always used to make fun of them when they were little. They always called them Peter, Paul, and Mary. This is... The nice thing about talking to you folks is that you actually know that reference. You know, I talk to young, I love doing elder law because I, people still think I'm young when I do elder law. Right? So, so we're going to talk about what happened with Peter and Paul. And they were both, next slide, and Peter and Paul were both 82 years old. Uh, and they had lived together. They never married. They lived together and, and they had slightly different financial situations. But they both got Alzheimer's at the same time. And they both went into the nursing home at the same time. And they both died at the same time one year later. And so their situations are instructive. Peter uh, had assets when he went into the nursing home of about $150,000. He had income of $2,000 a month. And he was, he, was, uh, kind of meet, he was really sick when he went into the nursing home. He had all kinds of problems. Um, and so they were going to have to spend a lot of time with him in the nursing home. Paul, on the other hand, had a little bit more money. He was cheaper and he saved more money. And he had $250,000 uh, when he went into the nursing home. He had slightly better uh, income because he had more of a pension. He had $2,500 a month. And he was only kind of sick. Uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't really, really sick. He was, just ki he was just kind of sick. Now, the reason, by the way, why, why I'm making distinct, distinct distinctions about, this, about levels of sickness uh, is the, the, the way that mass health figures out how much it's going to pay the nursing home if you qualify for mass health. And this is really important. Um, about 70% of all patients in nursing homes are on mass health. So whenever you say, well, does that nursing home take mass health? The answer is always yes, always yes. Uh, if nursing homes kind of bread and butter is paid for by mass health. Their kind of profit is made by the relatively small number of people who are there on private pay. Um, Private pay right now, just to use the example here in, in, in Martha's Vineyard, is about $12,000 $12, a month. If it, and that's for a, a room in a double, in, a, in a, a nursing home bed, which is in a double room. If, if the person who is sleeping in that bed, or sitting in that bed, though, qualifies for Mass Health, Mass Health isn't paying the nursing home at that point $12,000 a month. They're paying on a sliding scale depending on how sick that person is. Um, they, they negotiate, they have a, a, have a scale from, of, of, of 1 to 10 based upon the, esti the, number of, the estimated number of nurse minutes per day that have to be spent on that patient. So the sicker that person is who is in the nursing home, the more mass health pays. But the key to understanding the reason why we're, we're talking about this tonight is that no, the sickest person in that particular bed, the really sick person, 
is being paid by MassHealth $8,400. That's the same bed that on private pay was being paid $12,000. The person who was only kind of sick, the kind of, this is what we'll, we'll, this was, if I recall correctly, this was uh, Paul in our example, one of the two brothers, we'll get to him. The person who was just not really physically sick, he was just kind of wandering around a lot, you know, and he was, you know, he kind of, you didn't want to let him out of the house because you kind of didn't know where he was going to end up. So he was there, he had kind of, you know, early stage or late stage dementia. That person, MassHealth is only paying $4,751 per month for that same bed. So if you, if you are stuck being in a nursing home, your goal is to make sure that you're in that bed, not on the private pay rate, at which, at which point you, the burn rate on your private savings is extremely high, but at the MassHealth rate. So there may very well always be an incentive to be on MassHealth, and we're going to talk about